who's here? Look, the cat is straight away getting in on the action. Oh, let me put this light thing on. <gasps> Sweetie. We need some light on here. Oh, she's behind me now. That's better. How's that? Oh, and it cutting my head off here a little bit. Let's adjust. Sweetie. I'm going to adjust the height of this thing. Sweetie, go over here. Let's skip that out of there. Oh, am I up the right way? Anyone? <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm looking at my laptop. And I'm up the wrong way. Ah, uh, right, okay, let's figure this out. One second. Sweetie, you're getting in the way. You're not making this easy. Come on, off you get. Off you get. Good girl. Right then. No, let's try it. Um, <laughs> nope, that's not good. Sorry, everybody. I don't know why it's doing this. I always, I always do it that way. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm doing it the way I always do it. Does anyone know what I'm, I should be doing? Um, sideways thing is kind of cool. Thanks, Gunmetal. Um, yeah, it's probably not great long term. So, I don't really understand why it's doing this to me. Rotate device back. I'm going to take it out. Oh, let's do it like that. Right, if I do it like that, that's the wrong, that's completely wrong. But it's kind of up the right way. Yeah, but it's, it's not quite right, is it? Let me try and go back this way. Orientation is locked, it's telling me. So is that, yeah, lower down. Okay, we'll, we'll just, um... <laughs> Christ all bloody mighty. Who likes my pyjamas, by the way? Where's the cat? Right, yeah. This ain't, this just not right. It shouldn't be like this. Oh, I need to, no. I need it this way. Oh. Come on, just. This is all wrong. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to start again. I'm going to I'm going to end this one and I'm going to start again cuz this just isn't working. I think I think I need to do that. Unless I've got some kind of options on here. No, um, nothing there. Uh, I don't know why it's got to be. Uh. Uh. No. Uh. Huh. Okay. The light just hit my head right here and it really hurt. So I did well not to swear then. Um, this fucking thing. Okay, I swore then. Uh, it's pissing me off now. Help! Get me out of here. Oh, I can't use this thing. Uh. Stephen Thomas, oh, how can you tell? Oh my God. Oh, right, I just have to put my light back together. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. Talk amongst yourselves and um, I'll put, put the light back together. I've lost a bit. My head hurts. There's a bit. Oh. 
Right, let's put that back there. How's that? <laughs> yeah, this is up the, it's not the right way, so it, it will be annoying to watch this, but this video back, because it's up the wrong way. It should like, it shouldn't be like that. So I, I don't really know. I'm just gonna have to go with it. So <laughs> let's have a look and see <laughs> if you're all laughing at me. Um, Indie sense, uh, technology sometimes sucks. Kiss, uh, Mohammed, just chill out and start again. Hi Claire, things you go through for us. Thanks JG. Peter, what's everyone's smell of the day? Yes, what is everybody's smell of the day? Um, Kevin Fitzpatrick, what's uh, from the States? Still waiting for cheap beast mode men's cologne. Happy holidays. Um, yeah, I don't really know anymore. I used to have access to Mr. Smelly's perfume collection, so I was able to do some good sort of list of videos. God, I'm, I'm sweating. Is, do you know what? I thought these pajamas were a good idea, but they're thick and they're making me sweat. I'm gonna open a window. Uh, yeah, I used to have access to Mr. Smelly's collection. So I was able to do list videos because he's got a really vast collection. But uh, unless I sort of, I could, I guess, get in touch with him and uh, let him know what to bring next time we meet up, but I'm not that organized. So uh, let's talk just for a moment about this bottle. How stunning is that? So this was a gift from a colleague and his lovely girlfriend for Christmas and I love this bottle so when I'm done with this I'm going to fill it with fairy lights because I think it will look absolutely beautiful so isn't that lovely but in the meantime I'm enjoying it not a usual tipple for me a pink pink fizz but I thought it would be fun to have a pajama party and get the pink fizz out so what's everyone wearing and what's your drink of the night how was your Christmas share share away oh let me just read your comments. Uh, Mohammed Raj Ankara Noir, that's the inky vetiver, if I am uh, correct. Indie Sense is the Oud Bouquet, so uh, Gourmand Oud. Havi Sense is wearing Bengal Rouge, which I think is from the sample that I sent you, Tracy. And I, if I recall on your Instagram today, you said it's the last little bit you've got and you're loving it. Mark Patton says hello, hello back. Uh, Peter's Robes, Robes Reeves, 4160 Tuesdays special batch. Ah, oh, interesting. I've actually got a 4160 Tuesdays on this wrist. We'll come back to that. Uh, Kevin, you're beautiful, just do the best you can, all right, yeah. Okay, thank you. Valet Dina, hi Claire, I made it. I'm wearing Mongolan, lovely, I love that. Beautiful vanilla and lavender scent. Uh, uh, Tracy Comfort and Sense got the same bottle as a gift. So you got Bengal Rouge as a Christmas present, did you, Tracy? That's amazing. Uh, Peter Corcoran is drinking tea. Cheers, Peter. Cheers, everyone. JG Scent of the Day Sangre Dolce by Strangers. Uh, that is, is that the. Blood Orange Gourmand. I think I might have a sample of that. Uh, drink of the day, Sauvignon Blanc. Cheers. Mark Patton, Aqua di Gio Profumo here. Uh, Fran is Amber Nagui. Mohammed Raj, yep, uh, the Inky Vetiver. Uh, we've got Andrew from Hollywood Silent Film. If you don't know Hollywood Silent Film, you might know Andrew from O to Cupcakes. Oh, the cupcakes where he appears with Arlene from Delicious Delights. And he's wearing Sea Salt and Fig by Old Navy. I've heard of that, never tried it. Uh, Confident says, no, the rose sparkle. Okay, you didn't get Bengal Rouge, but you did get some rose sparkly fizz. So I take it you got the same one then. That bottle, what are you going to do with your bottle when it's done? Will you do something creative with it? 
Mark Patton is on the champagne. Cheers. Uh, Sarah May. Sarah May, she's got a lovely YouTube channel. If you don't know, go and check her out. Uh, she's wearing Nina Ricci Luna. Mohammed Araj uh, in bed cast, casting to my TV wearing nothing. When you say you're wearing nothing, <laughs> We are talking fragrance, I take it, but I am completely okay with if you're wearing nothing, that's fine. We're all friends here. Um, comfort and sense. Tracy hopes to get Bengal Rouge at some point. I hope you do, Tracy. You deserve it. And Mohammed Raj had to be it earlier. JG, yeah, it's beautiful on skin, but it takes time to warm up. Um, so I'm losing track. That was the uh, Sangre Dolce. Okay. I'm just conscious that this angle is all wrong. It's freaking me out a little bit. Uh, I don't know whether to try and fix it again, but I might bang the light on my head again, and I don't know what to, I don't want to do that. John Fella is wearing Parfums to Money Pegasus. Cheers, John. Thank you for being very complimentary in the comments towards me. It's very nice. Mm. So today, tonight. We are, we're gonna have a nice chat, I think. Um, Valadina got her Bath and Body Works Overload, an Amouage Blossom and a Love Magnolia and some kitchen stuff. Ah, oh, yes, um, what we got for Christmas. Come on, let's share. Now, um, I would love to know what everyone got for Christmas. Uh, doesn't have to be perfumes, can, obviously can be, and that, that would be, that's what we're all kind of about, but if it's something else, share away i um well obviously i'm single and my parents are at different distances and so my dad's in nottingham my mum is in france so they both have given me money so i'll treat myself to a blue microwave <laughs> mum gave me some money to get a blue microwave to go with my kitchen because i have um i've got some blue accessories in my kitchen and uh, I think Dad's given me a check, and so I'll probably just treat myself to some something smelly. I'm kind of thinking my next purchase, and I might get that with Dad's money, is Eldo's Eau Etat Libre d'Orange Eau de Protection. Rossi, is it Rossi de Palma? Rossi del Palma, the rose fragrance. It is beautiful. I had a sample of it and i really love it so if i can find a good deal then i think i might get that next and i'll get that with my christmas money uh the uk terry family evening claire evening mohammed raj my most special present was from a friend at work she's like a work mum and she knitted me a jumper i think it took her a few months yeah it probably would have done wow oh that's nice that's really nice. I think, um, yeah, when someone's put in the effort to do that, that does make it that extra special. And Valadina, I love it when you do live chats. The aura that you create, it's like we're sitting next to you having a chat with someone. Oh, thank you. I need to get over the fact that this camera angle's all wrong. I need to just get past that and we'll just have a nice time. And um, thank you, that's a, a very lovely comment. Cheers, everybody. Oh. JG money and perfume I don't care about and lots of sweet things. <laughs> a UK Terry family, me and Brendan didn't get each other anything this year, all about the kids. Yeah, I guess if you've got kids then it probably is, but you then get that magic from, from the children and the excitement and all that stuff, which is really nice. So I didn't get Sweetie anything because she doesn't know it's Christmas. And I told her on Christmas day, I said, Sweetie is Christmas gave her extra special love lots of strokes it's a Chris, like it's christmas time we're gonna feel really good feels and nice things are coming and she was all like brr, brr, brr. so that's what we we gave each other love and that's all we needed apart from that oh uh, yeah she's not into silly toys or anything anyway and she's not into special treats food wise she only wants her basic biscuits and as long as you've got plenty of water, sweet is fine, she's happy. So we can't really give her anything more. Uh, Mohammed, your tree looks amazing. Thank you, I love this tree, it is so beautiful. Have you seen this decoration? I'll, I'll, you can't, Ooh. 
it's a perfume bottle. Isn't it cool? So the tree's got little sparkles on the ends of the branches and white bits, so it looks kind of like frost and snow, which I love. Oh. So who likes my pyjamas? I got these from TK Maxx. TK Maxx? I think it's TK Maxx. They're huge, they're massive. I ordered the large thinking sometimes things can be smaller than you expect. They're absolutely huge. I couldn't be asked to send them back. So I decided to grow into them. So the last <laughs> the last month, I keep saying, oh, it's Christmas. And um, I've kind of grown into them. Not, not fully, but yeah, I've decided to keep them for fat days, fat weeks, fat months, fat years. And um, yeah, but they've got perfume bottles on them. So who is wearing their PJs? Let me know. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, John, your face looks amazing. You have the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. <laughs> I look hot in my PJ. I am hot. I'm sweating. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> I'm going to get all shy now. Stephen, in bed, ready for an early start for the work in the morning. Today I wore uh, Milton Lloyd Cobalt Fahrenheit copy. Okay. Any good? I've seen those Milton Lloyds in Chemist before. I don't know if they're any good. You kind of like spray them and forget about them, walk away. So I've never really tried them. But um, yeah, work tomorrow. That's a bit poo. I've done, I've, well, I say I've done my work for Christmas. I do have to go back for New Year's. So I did, what did I do? The uh, the day before Christmas Eve, I worked well, the night. I worked the night shift before Christmas Eve, twelve hour night. Then I worked Christmas Eve, twelve hour night. Then I worked Christmas Day, twelve hour night. Uh, we did have pizza to kind of celebrate Christmas, which was nice. The company paid for us to get pizza, which was really lovely, and it was quite a chilled, fairly chilled evening. It wasn't too busy. We had a few things to deal with, but not too bad. So Christmas night wasn't too bad. The beginning of, um, so the first night and the second night were a little bit busy and a little bit hairy at work. And then I have three, no, three or four days off. I've got four days off. Today was one of them, but obviously I was sleeping half the day at least. And then I'm in this groggy, like this groggy funk of night shift at pray night shift funk i don't know if you guys if any of you know or do night shifts it's hard to get over night shifts and so today was a bit of a slug uh, i wanted to do stuff i really wanted to see if my friends were available for visits drop chocolate to their children i wanted to get my house tidied up i wanted to do some washing we've got the washing in the machine and and on but i haven't gone much further than that so I just find it really difficult. Just kind of like zone out a little bit. Um, okay, gunmetal, 3 p.m. here, no PJs yet. But you know what? There's no time limit on PJs, gunmetal. You can wear them whenever you want. PJs are just basically, if you're not outdoors, that for me, if you're not outdoors, you should be in your PJs. Uh, John, am I a nurse? No, so many people think I'm a nurse, but I work for a water company, so I, monitor reservoirs and treatment works from a distance on computers it's like playing a computer game and you just like ooh, press a button and push a bit more water here or there it's um it's not glamorous uh but it's also it's quite a nice it's quite a nice job but yeah i did i don't think i could be a nurse i think i've got i've got the empathy but i'm not sure i could handle the well God, the stress of it and the responsibility of it so absolutely anyone who out there who's a nurse you've got my full respect because yeah I don't think I could do it oh. uh, Mohammed no pajamas here that's because he's complete stark bollock naked uh, Tracy's got a festive PJs on toadstool style from calf kits and lovely everything about you Tracy is kind of is calf kits done it's um shabby chic it's french patisserie it's just lovely and I, I i know i always say it but i absolutely love the images you put on instagram they just 
delicious and just so nice to look at. Uh, JG, hate pyjamas, not in general, but wearing them. So you don't hate seeing them on other people, just don't want to wear them. I kind of like, I probably, I won't sleep in these because it'll be too hot. This is a thick material, it's crazy. Like, so I'm, I'm a bit too hot as it is. UK, Terry family, Claire, I think we are over sales soon. Oh, is it? Joe, is that you? I didn't realise that. Joe, is that you? I I had no clue. Is it Joe and Brendan I'm talking to and I didn't even know. Mm. Uh, John Fella, when are you going to visit New York City? Um, I have, I've, I went to New York many years ago. I've not been back. It's not number one on my list of priorities to go back to. I'm not a massive city girl. I get a little bit lost in cities. But um, if I go to New York City, John, I will let you know. And um, and yeah, you can buy me a fizzy wine or something. Uh, oh, oh, shit. Mm. <laughs> I just spilled it everywhere. Oh, it, so it is Joe. Nice to see you, Joe. Thanks for popping by. <laughs> um, it's always funny when friends from real life pop up in my weird fragrance world. So I'm not ever expecting it. It's um, it's almost slightly embarrassing or cringe because they're it's like two worlds colliding. <laughs> but I mean, Joe know Joe knows me. And I know Joe, and so it's all good. Uh, Tracy, we're gonna have the same color microwaves when you get yours. I went for blue too, so I love a bit of color. Oh, that's cool. Have you gone for one of the retro ones? So I'm, I haven't ordered it yet, but I'm gonna go for a pale blue retro microwave, probably one of the Swan ones, because I've got a lot of pale blue stuff. Uh, Peter sweats and slobbing out after eating too much. Oh, Peter, don't. Don't even go there. So I didn't even have, I didn't have a Christmas dinner. I want no excuses for gaining a shit ton of weight. It, it is literally just me going, it's Christmas. So I'm going to put it in my mouth. <laughs> we are talking food here. And uh, it's been going on for about a month and it's been like just building up, building up. So now my pyjamas are more filled than they should be. We'll just say that. I don't like putting on my jeans. They feel tight. I can feel my stomach poking out above the jean belt. Oh my God. It's an unpleasant feeling and I need to I need to deal with it soon. But I need the weather to turn a bit nicer so I can go on a bike ride because that's a good way of smashing off a few calories quite quickly. Um, uh, Joe. Uh, from UK Terry family, surprise, all good in the hood. I'm off to bed now, speak soon, hopefully see you very soon. Yes, Joe, lovely, thank you so much for popping in and yeah, hopefully I'll see you at Sally's or come down the Huntsman tomorrow. There's a band on, uh, Sally's, Sally's a yes, may, yes, no, maybe, but um, there's a band on down the Huntsman, so come along, Joe. Uh, Tina from the Critical Virgo, if you don't know who, Tina, She's got a really nice channel. She does Fragrance Fridays and she talks about something every Friday. Very, very authentic and completely no BS. So if you don't know who she is, uh, she's right here and she's letting me know that holidays are for weight gain. <laughs> oh, oh my God. You know what? It's all right saying it's all right, but I do feel a bit ill. But... And I wouldn't normally drink. This drink's quite calorific, the old um, fizzy wines. And so I think fizzy wine's not quite as bad as normal wine, but it's quite calorific, isn't it? And I wouldn't normally, but I've given up. I've given up. I'm just going to... I'm going to get a crane lifted out of my car, out of my house in a week or so. Mm. <laughs> we haven't even started on our topic of conversation. Um... But I'm having fun, having fun, having fun, having fun chatting with everyone. As soon as you get bored of just chatting generically, then let me know and I will move things on to 
topic of conversation. So what I wanted to talk about in this video is, so I don't know if you've seen my Instagram or if you saw my last video, just um, a little bit of male, male, oh, how do you even put it? I don't want to call it misogynistic. I don't want to say it's misogyny, although in some, in some minority cases, maybe it is, but for the most part, I feel like the fragrance community is a little bit dominated by the the men and it can be slightly uh, all, all male dominated and kind of exclude the females of the community. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, Peter Corcoran, yep, the same. Um, so I think we need to have a little bit of a chat about that. Plus there's some, there's some good news, I think, with that uh, involving Robes 08. He's uh, obviously got uh, the, um, the sort of founding father channel, Robes 08, on YouTube. And he is completely on board and is very supportive of female reviewers. And we're going to go into what he's come up with. Is, uh, as a way of supporting the female fragrance reviewers. So I think it's really, really cool. So I think we'll go into that in a little bit. Um, uh, John Fuller, you're the best. You have so much substance. I'm not sure if you're talking to, to me or um, Tina, but either way, thank you. <laughs> oh. So I think well, let's go there. Let's, let's talk about, so there's a couple of videos that I'm not going to say triggered me because I'm not triggered. It's not affecting me emotionally, but it's affecting me in a way that I I want to support my fellow female reviewers. Now, I think I said in my last video, I'm not looking to be this massive YouTuber and I'm not looking to hugely grow my channel. So it doesn't bother me that I'm small, but it does bother me when females seem to sometimes just get completely not considered or um, or thought about or mentioned in videos. And the video that sparked all of this was Jeremy Fragrance's video about his top 10 favorite, most complimented fragrance reviewers. Has anybody seen that? Let me know, pop a little comment on, let me know if you watched it if you're aware of it and I will breathe and take a drink um, so Mohammed same as generally everywhere but changing slowly problem is it's too slow the new generation are going to be more empowered yep definitely um, gunmetal did Jeremy ever respond to you no um, I think his, my comment on his video was never public, so I, I don't know if he's got a filter that stops the bigger comments from even going on there, or if he silenced me in a, um, a discreet way. So, but you can't see my comment on his video. Uh, Mohammed wants his two girls to be very strong and independent. Exactly, that's what, that is exactly what you need, otherwise they're, they're gonna struggle in life. Um, Mohammed Jeremy is a bit cringy though. Um, so yeah, um, where was I even? So the video that Jeremy did was uh, his top 10 most complimented fragrance reviewers. Now when I actually watch the video and I don't normally watch Jeremy's videos, I watch the ones that I that get a little bit of chat, you know, when someone says, God, Jeremy looked a bit crazy in this one. My natural curiosity will lead me to watch that video. This one, I saw it being chatted about on Eugene's channel, so You Smells Good. He did a live, uh, just, uh, was it Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve, he did a live, and I saw some mention of this video, and I was curious that he's rated other fragrance reviewers, and I thought, yeah, okay, I'm gonna see what that's all about. So, um, yeah, I watched it, and as I watched it, and I saw reviewer after reviewer was uh, male, um, 
isn't it? Majority white male, I think he did do big beard business as well, but uh, white male reviewers and big beard business and no females. But I'm not saying for one second that I would have wanted to be featured on that video and I'm not saying for one second I would want any of my fellow female reviewers to be featured on their video. I wouldn't actually wish it on an enemy because he was quite rude about the reviewers. They were shit sandwiches that he were dealing out to these guys. Um, there was some that he said they were good and he didn't give any negatives, but at the same time he didn't articulate one point about why anyone was good not one point if i was going to critique or review or even just do a really positive video about my top favorite reviewers i would give reasons so i would say for example emmy ever after she's lovely to listen to she's very soothing she's very um She's attractive to look at. She talks about a diverse range of fragrances. She seems to have quite good knowledge about the, and, and she's great at describing the fragrances. So that's how I would describe another reviewer. But in this video, there was no positive critique whatsoever. Just some critique about so-and-so could be bolder uh, so and so kind of said so and so is very bland. It's not very exciting. Um, I can't even remember. Oh, jo poor George, George from the Fragrance Apprentice. He was number two, so then he got the number two slot. You'd think that Jeremy would have great things to say about him. He kind of said, "I get the impression that George doesn't go out very much." and it doesn't pull five women a night or or something like that so you know it was very a very unusual video i feel like we'll never understand the motives behind this video but at the same point i just felt i felt like here is an example of misogyny in fragcom and this is not good because this is the man, the man with the biggest numbers, regardless of whether you appreciate his output or not, he's got the biggest numbers and he is not lifting up any females in the community. The only females you get are the models that he pops out in his videos who get to sniff whether they like Ultramel better than Lan Louis Delon. And that that's it. So, yeah... I, I felt that I had to say something. Um, so let me just check my comments. Um, uh, Peter Cochran saying, uh, so Mohammed says Jeremy is a bit cringy though. Peter says, yeah, a bit. He's awful. Uh, especially, especially um, Mohammed, especially with his white suits. An Instagram post of him in his white boxes. That, that is that is very cringe. It's slightly nauseous, nauseous making. Um, Sarah Mays is saying, "Up, oh, ugh." Um, Gunmetal didn't bother to comment on his video. His behaviour kind of creeped me out, like he was on something. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Jay, Jeremy wanted to be fed some attention for Christmas. More news at nine. <laughs> That's from JG. John Feller, Jeremy is a big prima donna. Peter Corcoran, it was full of backhanded compliments. It was, but it wasn't even actually that backhanded. I mean, it, was, it wasn't that, that many compliments. It was, this is my top 10 most complimented reviewers. So-and-so is shit, could do better, should do this, should do that. But he's good. So-and-so should have done this, could do that, we should do this, but he's good. It, it really was shocking, shockingly bad, and I don't know, I, I don't understand why anyone would take any value from that. So I'm definitely not saying that I wish he had talked about women because I don't think he could do anyone any justice in that respect. Um, 
I think he's, he probably had some agenda. I just wouldn't know what that was. Um, why is, so hang on, Rich Mitch, the view is having my life. What do you mean the view is having my life? What What's going on here? Um, Mohammed, he's all about himself, just a German businessman in it. In it. Gunmetal raining in it. Yeah, sorry about the noise. It's raining. I'm in the conservatory. I've got a plastic roof here. So it's very, very loud when it rains in here. Um, Peter, he's really insecure. I think, I don't, I mean, I'm no psychologist, but I would say he's got some issues. Probably has issues from his childhood and yeah Peter you're probably right he's probably quite insecure he's done very very well for himself but the persona he puts out is not the real him and that is a really sad thing I think uh, so Tina critical Virgo what would Jeremy do when his luck looks run out he's never been my favorite I don't hate him either just blah yeah and uh, that's the thing he is kind of trading on his looks and the fact that he's telling everybody he's getting all the girls but that can't go on forever and is he really getting all the girls or any girls i think that i'd like to think that most women out there have got enough about them or enough uh enough awareness to spot uh, massive problems um, Peter, we need more people like Tom, Peter and Woffs. God, yes. So they are the absolute amazing best boys of Fragcom. You are completely right there. I love Woffs from The Loft. I love Tom from Ouch 110 and Peter from Fragrance View. And Peter, loving what he's doing with his brand. I'm so pleased for him. He's sunk every bloody everything he's got into it and it seems that he's really on to a winner so yeah they are they're all awesome they are honest transparent and just gen genuine fragrance fans and that's what we need in this world but we also have to accept that there are going to be people that are here for their own reasons you know they're probably into fragrances but they also have other agendas and we have to accept that and that's life you know business business is business and all that stuff and and it's just down to us as individuals to discern who we want to watch who we want to follow who we want to trust and at the end of the day everyone's everyone's opinion is valid and you know you shouldn't ever take one person's opinion as you know gospel sample everything sample everything because there's a shit ton of stuff out there that's getting hyped that we know is, you know, we know, we know things are um, maybe not completely transparent when it comes to sponsorships and free stuff. Gunmetal, Tom and Peter are fantastic. Absolutely. Rich Mitch is best. Yes, Rich Mitch, I told you earlier, you are number one first commentator supporter of fragcom uh eric gonzalez can't wait to get centauri which one are you getting eric Baladina. Uh, oh my god yes i saw that video i was like what the fuck how do you give a compliment but with a criticizing on what they need to improve like he doesn't need a lot of improvement himself <laughs> he's a narcissist yeah um, gunmetal wise words claire thank you uh, JG, the Loft guys are killing it. One of the most authentic channels, although prone to fawning, but seem they love most things they review. Do you know what I love about Woffs? I love how they go, oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I love it, but it's pure, it's pure, genuine passion. They're like, whoa, whoa. I love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, Sarah Mays, Benjamin from Centre Tire is amazing as well. Benjamin, I love how he's coming along as well because Benjamin from Centre Tire is kind of made, put it out there. He's going to be who he's going to be. He's going to look in. He's going to look into what he's looking into, and he's not going to be swayed by too many sort of trying to build his channel. He's not. He's not going to be swayed. He just wants to do what he's going to do, and I love that. And that they're the people that you might. They might not get the 
biggest following because they're not doing the top 10 lists and then you know they're not following the sort of painting by numbers rules to get followers on YouTube but you can watch and actually learn something and feel the passion and I think that's what it's all about. Yana's here, hi Yana. I need to top up my drink and I'll give you a cheers. So Yana off the channel, Tom Elise is in the building. Oh, yeah. cheers Yana. I know you're not much of a drinker, but here's my drink. Oh, it needs more, it needs more. So by the way, fizzy wine makes me throw up. <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. So, and I can't not finish the bottle because then it will get thrown away because it will go all um, flat. So yeah, fizzy wine makes me sick. Can actually make me projectile vomit. <laughs> and I, I've got a story, but I'm not sure if I want to share that. But yeah, fizzy wine can be quite detrimental to my health. Just saying. Um, let's have a look here. Um, Mohammed, I have a theory shorter videos get more views. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's a, a kind of like standard thing that you try not to do videos that are sort of longer than 15 minutes, really, because I don't get the views. But for me, I've decided just to do what I want and not worry about views. But if you are trying to build your, your channel, you can find resources that tell you how long your videos should be, what time you should post them, the things you should say, the call to action, all that fucking crap. But I'm not here to be number one YouTube reviewer. I mean, I've been going, what, seven, seven or eight years on this channel and my viewers are, my subscribers are about four, 4,300 at the moment. That's not to say I wouldn't like to in, increase, but I'm, and I'd hate to sit here and talk to no one. I love being involved in the community. I love the interaction. And I, you know, it's really nice to get brands to get in touch with you sometimes and want to send you things. I'm not gonna deny that, but I'm not here to get a sponsorship from Parfums de Mali and I have to sell every fucking bland offering that they want to come out with and pretend that I give a flying fuck because I couldn't do it. I re I just couldn't do it. And that's not to slate anyone that's got ambitions, but it's not for me. It's not for me. Um, Yes, uh, Rich Mitch, what is your name? Is it just, is it Richard? Um, uh, Gunmetal, can't wait for your perfume release, Claire. Do you know, I'm, what, the only thing I don't know with my perfume release, I really don't know how the shipping side of it's gonna work, whether I'm able to get it abroad. I really hope so. And I'm gonna do everything in my power. I've got some nice connections. The brand that I work with at the moment, or the, the, the perfumer that I'm working with, she can only ship at the moment to the UK. However, there's a couple of there's a couple of things that could change that, and I will do everything in my power to get it out there because I really want people to just from the my favourite mod. So my favourite option at the moment, I loved it so much that I know that we are onto an absolute winner, and I'm not talking like we're winning financially but what I mean is we have together and mostly mostly my perfumer but together we have created something really beautiful I've had some feedback from friends and family and it is honestly it's something special it's got a really nice sort of story to it and what we've done so far i'm just so excited for so i just want to share that with the world it is a, if we're talking profit i will get a tiny 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 profit if we sell the first the first batch but we're talking um let's say i don't want to be too specific i don't want to give too much away but 
enough profit for me to go into Harrods and maybe buy a middle a middle range niche of fragrance. That would be the profit I make from the whole first batch. So this is not a profit enterprise as such. Of course, I'd love to make profit, but the opportunity to work with a talented perfumer and put something out there that is completely me can't can't beat it. I would I would take that and and run with it and I don't need anything more. So yeah, I'm really, really excited. Um, uh, Eric Gonzalez, can we expect a frangie panny note? Actually, no, because it's not part of the brief. So we're going kind of, I don't want to give too much away, but we're going very British, nostalgic, old school, not old school as in vintage, but British nostalgic childhood memories. So frangipan is not something obviously that grows in Britain. So no, although I do love the frangipani note, as you obviously know. Um, gun metal, I think we're talking about Parfum Somali. Uh, so far they seem to have irritated my nose, except for Delina. I think with Parfum Somali, I just don't know. They're obviously... They're obviously, I don't know if they're paying reviewers, but they're certainly sending out a lot of bottles to reviewers. And so far their fragrances have been quite a bit generic, even the really nice ones. So I do agree that Delina is nice. A Cassili, I had a sample of, or a decant of Cassili. I think they're female leaning fragrances. The, the florals, the gourmands, they're nice, but they're a bit too safe. And I just feel, I don't know, there's something in, there's something internally with me that doesn't quite trust them. And I know that sounds, I know that sounds really harsh. There's something that slightly jars with me and I can't articulate it, so please, just take this as one person's opinion, make your own. I don't want to put anyone off the brand. I know they've got a lot of followers, a lot of love, but for me, something slightly jars with this brand. That's it. That's it. Oh, look, Dan's in the building. Um, hello, Dan. Uh, I have to say the sample of your fragrance I tried the other day. It's stunning, great opening. Thank you, Dan. Um, Valadina, I agree. Some people are on here as fragheads but have different agendas. Business is business. Doesn't mean you have to tear down another YouTuber. Absolutely. Um, uh, Gunmetal, agree Claire. Delina isn't unique. I thought it was. It smelled similar to Nic Nicolai Parfums Rose Royale which is much cheaper. It's not a unique accord. And yeah, and they get kind, they get accused of being a, under the rate, under, I don't know what the word is, but they get accused of being a clone house, but not opening up to that, not admitting that. I don't know about that. I really don't because I've never smelled anything by Puffins to Marley and felt that it smelled like something else. Although I, I think, is it late? Or is it later? Or no, ref, is it? What's the one that smells a bit like uh, Le Mail? And I did get a similarity, but um, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't out and out call them a clone house myself, but there's just this feeling. It's just an instinct. That's all it is. So it's just my thing that I'm a little bit suspicious of them for no real apparent reason. That's really that. Mm. Um, critical Virgo, so Tina didn't love Delina either. Peter has never tried Parfum Somali. Honestly, Peter, you're not missing out. I think knowing you and the little the little bit I know about your tasting fragrance, I really don't think you should waste your time trying them. I think they are more for the, I guess the kind of the pe the kind of people that like the top ten videos that wear fragrances to get compliments. I think that's that's what they're for, not necessarily for people that are into fragrances for artistry reasons or the 
the poetry of it, the love of it. They're not really that. Uh, Gunmetal, have I tried Sultan Pasha? No, um, a few reasons why. Sultan Pasha's fragrances are super, super, super expensive and they're oils, I think, that are tars. And I, I just love, I love my perfumes that I can spray on. So I've heard amazing things about his creations but the cost per meal is it's off the scale for, for me. I don't want to even try them because I would hate to fall in love because I just couldn't justify it. I, I couldn't. I, I think I just don't want to go down that rabbit hole on metal, if you know what I mean. I just want to kind of like keep it with the alcohol perfumes. Um, Jan is saying that he's a master and his attars are stunning. I've no doubt. Did you try them in Sons, uh, Jana, or have you got some uh, gum metal? Yeah, understand. If it matters, you're supposed to use a microscopic amount. Yeah, I, I get that, and I'm sure they do last really long. I can't imagine an al a, a non-alcohol oil projecting very much and I could be wrong but for me I like to spray and I like to project enough for me to smell it I don't need to I don't need, don't need to sort of take over a room but I like my fragrance to waft up around my face and I can smell it throughout the day and I would be worried that I would be super tight with Anatar at that cost so then I wouldn't use enough and then I wouldn't get much from it. So it would almost be pointless. That's what I think. Um, John Fenn is saying, Parfum de Miley Layton smells like Jean-Paul Gaultier. Okay, it's Layton, yeah. So Sweetie is just over he here. She's um, just doing that thing on the chair just here. Do you want to come up here? Come on. Come on in. There she is. Look over here. There, look. Can you hear her purring? You look too cute. So we haven't even started, really, on our subject matter. But that's fine, I think. That's okay, isn't it, sweetie? So, I guess we do need to kind of take it on topic so is anyone else going to say about female reviewers does anyone want to shout out their favorite female fragrance reviewers because i would love to shed some light and and kind of like get some attention on some of the lovely fragrance reviewers that i've met recently there are some really awesome ladies that talk about a diverse range of fragrances and so do tell me who, who do you love? Who do you love? Um, and I will list, and I try not to forget anyone, I will list my favourite ladies. Um, uh, no, gun metal, you, know, you uh, Instagram, whatever, like bloggers, uh, writers, whatever. Let's just shout out the ladies. Yes, on YouTube, Dana. Well, Dana, actually, she's really awesome on YouTube and on Instagram. So she is called a nose nose for anyone that doesn't already know Dana. She does really fantastic live streams. And she is, I don't know why she is so clever and I don't know why she knows so much. She clearly has a lot of experience in the fragrance world. She is a marketing expert, I understand, and extremely articulate, super intelligent, so overwhelming intelligence, really knows her stuff. And she talks about completely unknown fragrances that you've never heard of. So she is really awesome. If you're into the obscure and the underhyped and the underrated, then a nose, a nose, so a nose, as in a nose, 
Nose, as in K N O W S, and Nose knows she's on Instagram and YouTube. Thank you, Gunmetal, she is really awesome. So, definitely go check her out if you're into the more obscure and you want to listen to someone who. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Geese? Um, if you're into the more obscure, then cheese you girl. So, let's see. Um, I think that's foxes actually. We, we do get a problem with foxes. Um, so gunmetal saying they do project. I, th I think we're talking about the salt and pashas. Um, and you've offended people with your salt and pashas. That's interesting. Um, Mohammed Raj, what about the Bond line? If you're talking about Bond number nine, they're another brand I am not a fan of. Uh, I think the bottles are ugly and I've never smelled anything by them that has really excited me. Fire Island's quite nice for a beachy kind of fragrance, but I, I, I have this feeling, again, I don't know where it comes from. I have this feeling that I don't want to trust them. <laughs> There's a shit ton of fragrances available. I need to get these foxes to bugger off because I think they're raping each other on my shed or something. It's horrible. I don't know what's going on. Sweetie looks a bit disconcerted. Um, Rose and Jones. So Sarah Mays is saying, check out Rose and Jones. She is lovely English lady. Uh, lovely channel just just check it out rose and jones thank you sarah uh eric is saying lola scent yes i have i've loved lola for a long time her real name's lauren and she's at she's a registered nurse she has a very gentle and calming persona very lovely way of describing fragrances she is not about trying to massively sell her YouTube channel. She just talks about her passion and I think that's why I love her. She, she is awesome. Lola said definitely. Um, okay, John Feller, thank you. I'm not saying any more than that. Um, Mohammed Tiff Benson, yeah, Tiff, Tiff's cool. Um, Uh, Gunmetal Kaf Kes Kef Kes I can never say this bloody word, and I know it's like um, it's a known term. It's not just a blog name. Kef Kesk Kef Kesk Kef Kesk was the first blogger I follow. She set the standard. The thing I the problem I have with Kafka is the intensity of her reviews. So she's a writer. She's got a law. She's a lawyer. She's a trained lawyer. And when she writes, she kind of can't let go of her lawyer background. And this is, this is just my opinion. She's very, very, very specific on the details. And the reviews can take half a day to read through, which I think is amazing that she puts the time and effort in to do that. But she can also be very, very bloody minded from a couple of reviews that I've seen. And, um, yeah, I kind of skip, I, I do read her reviews here and there. I don't think she's cut, I don't know if she's, I know she stopped, she stopped reviewing stuff. But um, I went back on, I was, I remember I read her Shikra Palatan review. And she was absolutely adamant it's been reformulated. And actually the brand owner got in touch on her blog and said no. I've not reformulated it. Like you, you absolutely are wrong. I have not reformulated it. I can send you documentation to prove it. And she still carried on to say, well, well as far as we're concerned, me and my mum and everyone says it smells different now. So we think you've reformulated it. I don't know, just a little bit, um, but it's just, yeah. But fabulous, fabulous attention to detail is crazy so if you want an in-depth review kafkesk 
Cafe-esque is the place to go, definitely. But you just need to set aside some time because, yeah, they, they are long, 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 long reviews. Um, uh, Mohammed Waha Sawas, I love I love Waha. She went back to Syria. So Waha was living in London when she was reviewing on YouTube and she had an awesome, awesome channel, a, a, just a fantastic, quite feisty persona. And um, you just we were just kind of like chatting here and there. And then out of nowhere, she disappeared. And when I got in touch with her, she she responded and said, well, I've moved back to Syria. And I, oh fuck, I mean, I just hope she's okay because Syria is not a safe place to be. So I, I don't know if she, I really hope she went back to a, a more stable area of Syria, but for some reason she went back to Syria. And um, yeah, so that's, um, that was Waha. So unfortunately she's not doing YouTube anymore and hasn't done for a long, long time. Um, JG really like Clements. So Clements, I think it's CC, is it CC Clements. She's quite a small channel at the moment, but I predict big things. She's a French lady with beautiful articulation and a love of uh, all things sort of all things fragrant. And she's very she's very French, and she kind of like she'll talk about movie stars and what they wore and that kind of stuff. So she's very different. But really nice to watch, an absolute pleasure to watch CC Clements. Arlene, so Arlene is from Delicious Delights. So Arlene loves her gourmand fragrances. And what I love about Arlene is she is so honest and she will be critical and she will tell you that she doesn't like something and she's not fawning to anyone. So with Arlene, you're going to get much more negative reviews, but it's honest. It's just pure honesty. And I think that's what we all need in this community. Dana, a plum girl on Insta. Yeah, a plum girl, she has a beautiful blog and Instagram. So definitely have a look at her. Yana and Katie. I, I take it you mean Katie Puckwick, who we are hoping will be back to YouTube come the new year. So the word on the street is Katie's coming back to YouTube. Peter saying Kristen, so Kristen is Beauty Meow and I love her channel. Kristen is just a lovely human being and she has a beautiful collection, a diverse taste in fragrance. And yes, I definitely love watching you, Kristen's videos. Um, Gunmetal Stella Dye Flynn on Base Notes is a phenomenal reviewer. I log into Base Notes just to check out her reviews. Okay, I don't go on that forum very much myself. Um, if it comes up in a search because I'm looking for a review, then I'll, I'll click on it. I don't know why. It's just not my. Th it's not my default thing. I'm more of a fragrantic girl, if I'm honest. Um, JG Kafka is brutal and writes frequent freaking papers. I love that. <laughs> Uh, Valet Dina, I've just lost your comment. I'm actually not keeping up. I'm really sorry. Not keeping up here. Where's Valet Dina's comment just gone? Here we are. I love perf Parfum de Marnie's fragrances, all of them. Some are simple and some have a little more complexity about them, but you are entitled to your opinion. Yeah, no, and yep, yeah, as are you, definitely. Like, I'm not saying they're bad. I just have this, this instinct that I don't know. I don't think they're bad at all. I don't think they're, sh they're cheap and I don't think they're shit. There's just something, there's something slight that jars, jars with me ever so slightly. Might be to do with their marketing, not sure. Um, just going to look at your comments. Peter says Kafka is far too self indulgent. Yeah, okay, I can get that. Uh, Case Digen, I really enjoy my world of fragrance. Yes, my world of fragrances. She's a new revelation to me. So her name is Sam. She lives in London, but she has an American accent. I don't know her full story, but she is beautiful to look at, very articulate and completely honest, not bought out by anyone and just, just lovely. 
gun metal uh, cuff cut is quite lengthy to go through. Yeah, Vava Couture's gone. I haven't seen anything from Vava Couture. She, I don't know. She was quite wild at times. There was some times I saw some things on Facebook. She was a, I don't know, quite wild. I'm not gonna speculate, but I hope she, I hope she's okay. And her videos were quality. She put out really, really nice videos. Um, she always looked sexy and she if she was fun to watch so i hope that she'll come back um uh gunmetal i've tried the vintage sheet propeller turn versus current it has changed but it might be the natural material materials do not retain the same odor profile yeah i mean i wondered is it just to do with the aging of i mean if you're if you've got a bottle of something and maybe you're a perfume lover who has a lot of stuff so you don't wear it all the time you probably have got an old bottle and then when you finally run out and you finally get around to buying a new bottle that bottle has not had the aging process i just i did wonder if that was the case i don't know i mean kafka was very forthright very adamant but the brand owner was also very adamant they had not changed the formula. But maybe odour profiles, as you say, in some of the naturals would have changed. I mean, probably there was a time when you can get my source sandalwood, then you have to get sandalwood from a different source. Surely it's going to change. Who knows? Who knows? Um, I need to drink. How's everyone doing? I haven't even got on to my next topic of conversation. Uh, okay, Rich wants to chat sent. Delia is class. I don't know who Delia is. Let me know. Um, John Feller's got to go to a birthday party. Bye, John. Thank you for stopping by and always saying nice things. Um, Valadina, Smurfy Girly, Amy Loves Perfume, Demi Rollins, Lola Scent, Delicious Delight, Emmy Ever After, Kitty Meow. Oh, I don't know Kitty Meow. Okay, I'll have to check that one out. Um, Amy, Amy Loves Perfume. There we have an uh, absolute perfume lover through and through i love her videos her whole videos give me life the i mean the girl in a way i can't help thinking she's mad i can't imagine owning that many perfumes but if you're a collector and i think that's the, the thing is some people are collectors some people are more about having a fragrance wardrobe and i guess i'm the fragrance wardrobe kind of person amy loves perfume it's more about collecting and she does a fucking good job of collecting perfumes oh she's lovely and i love the tone of her voice i love the way she describes perfumes i love her, her honesty amy loves perfume is the best mitch mitch emmy is great yes emmy ever after she's a treat to watch she's like the perfect girl next door she's just calm and she talks about fragrance in such a nice way she describes them really lovely and yeah she's great uh, valadina so cute yes i watch so cute as well she's very much more about research rather than um i don't know she lives with the fragrances she talks about but she seems to talk about fragrances in a group so she'll say these are the Dior poison fragrances and she'll talk about all of them but she doesn't have them there with her so I feel like she does a lot of research which I think is great and it's another perspective but it's not about the emotional response to fragrances which I guess I'm a little bit more into but she is cool she's really cool um oh yeah gunmetal Ashley who some, sometimes appears on Sebastian's channel she's training to be a perfumer so it's always great to hear her perspective on stuff sebastian okay sebastian is not female but let's just give him some love for a moment because 
he is not the boys brigade he is he is completely inclusive has ladies on his channel all the time he's completely approachable he talks about fragrances from all over all all types of diverse fragrance it's about the designers and niche and masculine and feminine let's all just give Sebastian some love just for a moment because I think he's awesome and I met him in real life back in spring in when I went to Essence in Milan and he is just lovely in real life just calm cool really nice to be around just had this really great vibe so i love i love a bit of sebastian uh, so my problem right now is that my blood has given out <laughs> so what i wanted to know was would you lot be all right if i went for a wee and it might be like three minutes three minutes would you be okay talking amongst yourselves um because i uh, I don't think I can get through all the samples I've got that we want. I was going to be smelling with you. So, um, <laughs> Rich is saying go for a slash. Thank you, Rich. I am going to have to. Please don't go away. <laughs> I've got to go upstairs and I'll be back. Just talk. Talk amongst yourself. I'll be back. <laughs> oh. oh that's better <laughs> I can't believe I did that right um let's quickly top up my drink oh mm. ah. I will leave that like that so let's have a quick check um um just having a look at your comments sorry i've got to scroll up um peter corcoran love Ken, uh, katie parker I hope she comes back proper rich is saying emmy is great um even uh, Ashley should have her own channel. She'd be a huge success. Yes, I think we'd all love that. I think the when the perfumers themselves and the people with the expert expert experience and knowledge have a YouTube channel, we're we're all going to be there for that. So um, yeah, so I've been watching Aaron Terence Hughes's YouTube channel. I don't know if any of you are familiar. He's a fairly new perfumer on the block self-taught perfumer from the UK. Uh, he's been on Chris from Fragmentals channel. He's really interesting to watch. So, and I quite like, I quite like to see 
that different perspective. Um, Amy said she's not doing hauls anymore. Yes, she did say that. I remember that now. Yeah, I think she was. Uh, she had to get some surgery or something, so she had to concentrate on that. Which is, I uh, hope she's hope she's okay. Um, I need to get some surgery as well. I want to get my eyelids reduced. <laughs> so I wear a sticker on my eyelids to stop all this excess skin from hanging over my eye. So I'm actually saving up to get my eyelids reduced, and maybe a little bit of a brow lift as well. But that's kind of off topic. Um, <laughs> um, Peter, she's gone, let's talk about her. <laughs> You're all so funny. Oh, you could have speculated whether I'd gone for a poo and I was lying about needing a wing. <laughs> okay so i think i'm caught up so do you all want me to smell these tia carbonell things because the brand were really kind i actually got in touch with tia carbonell and i said i really want to smell your cafe carbonell which is their gourmand gourmand offering and i've seen talk of it on a few youtube reviews now and that was all I, I asked for was one sample and they said no we're going to send you the whole lot so they did so they sent me this nice little bag little cloth bag and they sent me a ton i mean i don't know we can do all of this tonight because i mean i'm due a projectile vomit anytime soon based on what i've been drinking but um if anyone knows this brand if anyone has any favorites or any that I, they'd like me to sort of pinpoint first try first let me know but i've got all of these samples from tia carbonell so let me know what you want me to try and i'll just in the meantime start just sniffing them and we'll talk about them once i've had a little drink I didn't even tell you my scent of the night though, did I? Um, <laughs> okay, right, I think you're talking much yourself, so that's right. Right, so my scent of the night, whilst we're talking about that, I've got on two fragrances I went with. So, um, I was just chatting to Liz Moores from Papillon Perfumery on Facebook and she was very, very sweet to me, very kind and uh, I felt after talking to her that I wanted to wear one of her creations and I've already, already worn Bengal Rouge quite a lot recently so I went with for an old school favourite. This is my second bottle that I've got through of this. It's Tobacco Rose and I'm wearing it here and here. And it's probably one of the more masculine fragrances in my collection. It's kind of, it's woody, it's rosy, and it's, is it spicy? I don't know if spicy is the right word. It's just special. Dry, it's very dry. With a slight, a slightly moist rose, but mostly dry kind of woods and hay and beeswax. Beeswax, I don't know. Beeswax might be more moist. I just want to say moist. But it's such a good fragrance. I haven't worn it for quite a while. And it was just because I was talking to Liz and I felt that I needed to wear something by Liz. And then over here on this wrist is, is a 4160 and it's Red Queen. So this is the one that they did in conjunction with Safle Bon. And this is a rose fragrance. So to me, this is a rose and cinnamon. And it's kind of spicy, but very woody. It feels like there's like a isoe super ambroxin, dry, cedar, woodsy thing underneath the cinnamon and rose. I'm still not entirely sure how I feel about Red Queen. But it is nice. But I'm just not sure. In terms of rose fragrances, it isn't my favourite. 
but it is nice, if that makes sense. I guess I find Tobacco Rose just that more exciting, that's all. But they are my fragrances. I had a nice marinade in the bath earlier because I had no energy, so it was a long time in the bath, and then I chose these fragrances. So if anyone hasn't shared their scent of the night as of yet, do do so. Uh, Gunmetal loves Tobacco Rose as well. Uh, Peter Corcoran, isn't there a vanilla one that's supposed to be great? Uh, are we talking for 160, Peter? Or am I missing something? Uh, Tom Elise, love that brand. Unfortunately, you have none of their fragrances, but I hope to get some and try the new Rouge one. Honestly, Yana, you really have to try uh, the Bengal Rouge. is amazing. Trying to think about your, what your taste in fragrances is like. Um, you you kind of like an animalic, so you might like Salome as well. I think you might like Salome, but it's super animalic. So if you like Hyrax, if you enjoy Hyracium in a fragrance, then you might like Salome. It was that was too much for me, too animalic. Anubis, a new. I think actually. Anubis might be the perfect hit of jasmine animalex incense. Anubis is pretty special actually. <sighs> so, are we going to smell some of these tear carbonyl things or not? Mm. I think we should really, shouldn't we? I've cut up some bits of paper in, uh, in anticipation. Mm. Cut up notebook, look, we've even got some writing on the backs of some of them. Because this is how we do it over here. This is how we do it in Kent. Kent in the southeast of England. Okay, so Tio Carbonell, Bar Kane. Back in my very early doors uh, initiation into niche, Tio Carbonell was one of the brands I got some samples of because they did a very reasonably priced discovery set and Barcane was excuse me Barcane was my favorite at that time we are going back at least five years I'm not sure even if it's longer so let's revisit Barcane uh, I've got some comment here um DC Jim R, Scent of the Night, Peter's New Fragrance, Dendera. Just got the sample pack in the mail today. Peter, you can smell the amber green tobacco rose. Yeah, there's definitely something in tobacco rose that is, and I, I am not an expert on ambergris, so I can't tell you if I pick ambergris out in a fragrance, but there is a sexy, woodsy, dry, musky, element to tobacco rose that is super sexy so maybe that's to do with the ambergris um gunmetal jealous at dc jim r um he says that peter's new fragrance dendera is intoxicating i think i'm in love wow that's amazing um uh Mohammed went for a midnight snack. Do you know what, Mohammed? I think I'm going to get a snack in a minute because I'm not fat enough yet. Actually, I'm totally fat enough. But yeah, we're going to worry about that later. So Barcane, Barcane was the fragrance from Tia Carbonell way back when I first got into niche that I really liked. And the notes on Barcane are bergamot, Geranium. If, if you don't know geranium, it's not everyone's going to know geranium. Geranium smells quite rosy. It smells like a rose-ish type thing, but it's very, very strong and fresh. I worked in, I did some aromatherapy, I wouldn't call it train. I did some training, but very, um, like a two-day course, so not too intense. And we blended different aromatherapy oils together. And geranium was one of the fragrances or the essential oils that I used. And it's it was astounding to me how it took over a blend. So geranium is a very, very strong 
and it smells rosy but it's also quite fresh and can have kind of like a herbal minty aspect. Sorry about scratching my neck with the sample. Uh, this has also got cumin and curry so that doesn't sound that that nice does it but uh, I remember it being quite nice. Cyst, sister, so I think that means like cistus labdanum, vetiver, myrrh, vanilla and oud. I do not recall oud being in the sample um, in the notes back when I experienced it but it was a long time ago so let's just give it a sniff and see how we're getting on so barcane barcane from tia carbonell whoa yeah so this is a spicy dry fragrance but there's a sweet and there's an underlying sweetness so it feels like an amber it feels like an amber accord like your um, benzoin your labdanum your vanilla your woods all sitting underneath some spices it's quite smooth it's actually to me I don't get the curry I don't get the cuming at the moment and that's a good thing because curry I don't want to smell like curry I don't want to smell like cumin quite often I do smell like curry that's because I eat a lot of curry I love curry but this doesn't smell at the moment like cumin or curry the cumin can smell like underarms it can smell like the unwashed this does not smell like the unwashed this is a really nice spicy amber is it standing massively apart from other ambers? Maybe not, but I think if you're into an amber fragrance, and I'm not talking ambergris, I'm talking an amber accord. I'm talking, to, I'm talking about resins, um, labdanum, I'm talking about vanilla. It's really nice, actually. I can understand, even though I've changed so much in my taste in fragrance, can understand why I love this one. So Barcane by Tia Carbonell still is really, really good. If you like ambers, if you like sort of sweet and resinous fragrances, then I think it's worth a test. It's worth checking out. Drink time. Oh, oh shit. I'm not drunk, I promise. But yeah, don't give me fizzy wine. Let's check in case anyone's commented. Um, so Mohammed had a sandwich with chicken, cheese, and crisps. That sounds good. I think there's a, a value in putting crisps in a sandwich that not everyone necessarily appreciates, but you can just pop a few crisps and you only need four or five crisps and you put them in a sandwich give it that little crunch and that little hint of whatever the flavour of the crisp might be, it can turn a sandwich around from something that's quite bland to something that's actually a party in your mouth. So I totally get that, Mohammed. Um, uh, Mohammed, can a fragrance be sexy? I think a fragrance can be sexy worn by someone so i don't think smelling a fragrance off of a, a strip was is ever going to be like oh that's so sexy because how on earth how can that be i think to make something sexy it needs a human component so it needs to radiate from someone's skin and it needs some added extras of a person's personality, appearance, energy, that kind of stuff. That's what I think. And that's just my humble opinion. Um, have, have I smelt Body Curious? Yes, I really like Body Curious. I don't own it, but it's a, a really gorgeous vanilla fragrance. I think um, a really good under the radar cheap fragrance. Really nice, actually. I like it a lot. Okay. 
Let's smell something else. Should we just go Lucky Dip style? Here we go. Right then. So this is called Jasper. Jasper. Let's, uh, the samples seem to be in different formats. So this one comes in a slidey box like that. And Jasper. I did try this one briefly and I have a faint memory of it, but let's just check it out now. Yes, so this is, uh, it feels like, uh, if I was to compare it to anything right now, I would say cool water. So it feels like a an aquatic fougere in a, in a nice way. It doesn't feel particularly niche. It doesn't feel challenging or weird. There's nothing at the moment that's hard to understand. I think if you like Cool Water by Davidoff, if you like Issey Miyake, if you like aquatics, you might like this. It's a bit of woodsiness. There's a little hint of something spicy going on actually. There's something a bit deeper and darker. It's not a pure, it's not a pure aquatic. But I do get that fresh, fougere, sea air. It's not my cup of tea in terms of I wouldn't wear this. But I think if you were dipping your toe into niche, and you were coming from a place of isimiyaki, this might be for you. It's got that green, I don't know if, I, I wouldn't say necessarily lavender, but green and aquatic and fresh. It's got quite a lot of substance to it. Yeah, a bit woody. Yeah, not my, not, not the most exciting, but might be interesting to someone that likes an aquatic. Uh, let's try, shall we dip? Dip into another one here. So we have Alahin, Alahin, Alahin. And I, I think I remember this one. Uh, I believe this is one of the rosy fragrances. Let's just try it. Ah, oh, this is a dabber. So it's interesting that their samples are all kind of different. Like, so this one's a dabber, which is fine. Um, let's just get that on the bit of paper. This is interesting actually, and I, I remember it from going, going way back to when I did sample some from this house. This was one of them. But my God, if I can explain how this smells. It's really interesting. It's completely different to anything else. I think it's Rose, I think. Does anyone want to look up the notes for me. Does anyone feel like moderating now? Because I think if we had some notes, it might be a bit more helpful. Does anyone feel like looking up the notes of Alahin, Alahin from Tio Cabernet? Because this is really, I, I honestly cannot pick out what's in this. I think it's, I'd say it's rose, but it's um it's spicy, it feels a bit Middle Eastern. It feels like incense and temples, but it's it's more um, much more to it than that. Let's have a look at the old comment. JG, heard good things about Carbonell's, but from someone who likes subtlety. Um, 
Well, the, the opening notes here, I mean, this is not subtle. Uh, DCGMR saying there's lots of notes listed and Rose is one of them. Uh, there's something really exotic about this fragrance. It could be like um, a Moroccan inspired spicy rose, Turkish delight. There's some sweetness going on. Oh, thank you DCGMR. Benzoin, Ilang Ilang, Labdanum, Iris, Orange Blossom, Patchouli. It is it's an assault on your senses, but in really a, quite a nice way. Would I call it an Ylang Ylang fragrance? No, I don't pick out the Ylang Ylang. I can understand that there's labdanum and iris and patchouli and benzoin because it feels quite resinous and sweet. But there is a freshness to it, which is possibly the orange blossom. It's really nice. It really is actually quite nice. Is it completely my style? Maybe not, not quite, but I think it, if you like something exotic, likeable, slightly fresh, slightly exotic, slightly incensey, Alahin or Alahine could be your cup of tea. But really, really difficult to just to blind sniff and pick out anything because I wouldn't, I, yeah, I just couldn't pick too much out there. So that one's really interesting. Let's have a little swig. I think I need a snack, but I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna hold on. Julia. So here we have. Julia, and so it's spelt exactly like you would in the English language spell the name Julia. So let's let's see. This is another dabber. So let's dab. Let's dab away and see what Julia is all about. I don't recall whether I smoked this one before. It's difficult to get the dabber on the paper. Here we go. So let's see how it goes. Oh. No, that that feels a bit incensey as well, you know, in a fresh way. That kind of fruity floral, fluty, fluty floral, fruity floral. This feels a bit tropical, a bit fruity, but not. It's almost bananary, so it wouldn't surprise me if this one's got a lang lang. Is anyone happy to look up the notes of Julia by Tia Carbonell? I don't know if um, DCGMR, if you're on the website, if you don't mind. This one feels almost banana slash ilang ilang with like a really smooth, creamy musk kind of feel. Very clean, quite fresh. Very much a kind of like a fresh daytime scent probably slightly leaning female. Our DC Jim R, thank you so much. Um, we've got sandalwood, incense and raspberry. Yeah, it's, it's clean, it's smooth, it's slightly fresh. Musk and labdanum, yeah, you totally get this clean musk, laundry musk almost. It feels more like you would expect a designer fragrance to smell like. It 
is quite nice but something about it's reminding me of Tiffany for her the the last not Tiffany love but the one prior to that or even Joy by Dior so it feels a little bit designer level Mus fruity musk raspberry musk more that it's better than that but it probably not that exciting to me let's try another one shall we is everyone still happy for me to keep smelling these let me know if you're getting bored give me a shout let me know next one we're going to do is early roses so I think we can guess the note or the main note in this one. Early Roses, Tia Carbonell. We have a sprayer, so um, life just gets slightly easier when you have a sprayer. So Early Roses, let's try Early Roses, see if we can figure out more than just a rose note here. Don't, yeah, they don't put the notes on the sample. So, um, DC Jim R, if you are still happy to look up notes, it would be much appreciated. Um, this one's Early Roses, and it's really, really nice. If you like roses, it feels like a peppery rose. It reminds me ever so slightly of Stella, Stella McCartney, the rose fragrance. There's a bit of a greenness to it. It's more about the rose than the greenery, but there is a bit of greenness to it. Uh, DCGMR, uh, give me the notes here. Jasmine, water notes, rose, pink pepper, musk, and amber. I can kind of see where they're going with, with the water notes. There is this balmy, like looking out at a big, smooth lake. There's this watery feel to the rose. Pink pepper, yes, definitely feels a bit peppery. The rose is not a very dark rose. It's not a got it's not a gothicy rose, even though it's got the pepper to make it more exciting. It's a pretty rose. I think if you are comfortable wearing Stella Eau de Parfum. And you wanted something just ever so slightly different you would like this i think if you like stella you'll like this which one you would prefer that would be personal to taste the pepper's quite prevalent the pepper's nice and strong and i like pepper i really like pepper and i like pepper pe paired with rose i really like that and they are the two main notes definitely here um the jasmine at the moment is not really too obvious to my nose it's more it's more of a rose and pepper concoction with like a woods a woodsiness like a sawdusty woodsiness i like that i like that a lot we need to try it on skin and see see where it goes but yeah it's really nice so that is called Hang on, good question, what's it called? It was Roses Early, wasn't it? Yeah, Early Roses, that one. So I think at, at the moment, that's my favorite. There's a hint of soapiness though. It's like, it's kind of clean and soapy. Ah, oh, Robes 08. So Mark, Robes 08 is in the building. So I think let's, um, Let's quickly go back to what we were saying. So, completely jumping off of the Tia Carbonyls, and we will come back to them. I was talking to Mark Robes08 today because uh, he, his, he is willing to support female reviewers. So, Mark is doing a bit of a giveaway, full details. Hopefully, uh, Mark, you can just type a little bit about the details. But he's saying if you are a youtuber with under 1000 subscribers or you're brand new and you're just just starting out he's doing a giveaway you can win a bottle of uh, jeremy's date for men or jeremy's office for men 
Uh, he's just basically trying to bring up the female reviewers. He's trying to support female reviewers, which is, as we were talking about earlier, really something that needs to happen. And to have a nice, a, a strong a fragrance reviewer with a nice big following, a very well respected member of the community to be lifting up the females is exactly what we need. So um, thank you so much, Mark, for coming along and do have a look at his Instagram and his Facebook group and you'll see what he's talking about. You'll see the giveaway that he's doing. The full details aren't up just yet, but if you're planning on, if you're a female and you're planning on starting up a YouTube channel, then, you know, it's a great time to do it and Mark will support you and he will lift you up and you also could win the Jeremy fragrance fragrances that he's uh, giving away as well if you're interested. So it would be really lovely if you have checked that out and um, if that's if that's something that you want to do if you're thinking about joining YouTube as an as a reviewer then as a female then absolutely now's the time to do it and to have a, a nice um, supportive icon founding father of Fragcom to lift you up and support you behind you then now's the time so a really massive thanks to Mark for getting on board and for seeing my Instagram post and seeing my disdain at what's going on in Fragcom and to not just put a like on there, not just um, make a nice comment, but to actually wholeheartedly take action. I'm astounded. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it so much. Um, so uh, Mark's saying, thanks Claire, truly appreciate your support. I'm hopeful we will have many new noses on YouTube. Yes, I really hope so. We already have some fantastic female reviewers. I think the thing is they just don't get the same uh, the same light on them as the gents do. It's, we, we don't know why, don't know. But it'll be, yeah, the more of uh, the, the really um, main players in YouTube, support the females the better I think the community will get and it's really nice to know that mo the majority of the guys out there are, are decent and they want to support the females it's just there's a few that are a little exclusive so oh, running out of breath so cheers Mark thanks for popping in I try not to spill this one. Okay, so thank you, Mark, for popping in. Uh, shout out to Robes08. And we'll go back and smell some more of these Tio Carbonyls. Has anyone tried any of these fragrances? So this one is called Oha. Oha, Oha. Um, thanks, Mark. Have a great night. I hope you had a lovely Christmas and Happy New Year. So, Oha. Uh, DC, Jim, R, are you still here? Are you still on the ball with our notes here? Um, we are now on O-H-A, o -H -A is the spelling. I have no clue what's in here. So let's find out. What I'm smelling in the air is actually quite nice. This feels like a patchouli and incense combination. Uh, looks like I'm completely wrong. <laughs> so DC Jim R is saying the notes listed are bergamot, tea aroma, rose, jasmine, cardamom, tonka, patchouli and white musk. Okay. 
yeah patchouli okay i got the patchouli <laughs> um it has a it does have a freshness actually um no i'm not good at tea notes i don't drink tea and i don't quite understand tea i can only associate tea with a cup of tea like my mum would drink which is uh, white tea uh, just a normal tea bag white milk and to me i hate the smell of tea and i hate the smell of someone's breath that's been drinking tea that tannin overdose makes me feel nauseous <laughs> and normally with fragrances when there's tea i don't always like it but i don't understand it so this fragrance feels really fresh I would say that the rose and jasmine are quite strong in here. It feels like a very fresh, almost old fashioned floral. It's a feminine old fashioned type of floral fragrance. But I do get the patchouli is definitely got some deep notes going on. Rich Mitch says Russian tea from Mask Milano is nice. JG Fragrantica Hive Mind says it's rose dominant. I would say it's 50 50 rose jasmine. It feels really old school. It feels a bit Chanel old school. Yeah, not really my thing, but if you're into vintage florals, if you're into vintage, vintage rose florals, it's got, actually, it's getting better though. It's kind of, now this is crazy, but it's kind of reminded me of Chupra Palatan. So I feel like there's a rich basis trying to fight its way out amongst the vintage florals. This is something I need to try on skin because I think this could be, this could be something that surprises me. Yeah, this could actually be something quite special. But you totally need to love rose and jasmine but it's got this base of resins resins are coming through yeah it's good actually dcgmr they're calling it a floral chupra that makes sense because it, honestly it feels like there is some labdanum going on in here and it's coming off a bit like chupra palatine not the same but it's giving me the same feels so I think that could be really good. Definitely has a very old school vibe. So let's go for another random. This one's called Melo. So it's M-E-L-O-E, -E, Melo. The colouring is a pale greeny, a greeny yellow for the writing. So that gives us the impression it might be quite fresh and green. Could be wrong. Melo. Melo. Uh, melon melon it could be like a melony fragrance this is another dabber so bear with while i try and get the bloody thing onto the paper oh yes there's an epic fail it's not coming out oh there we go right okay we have we have the fragrance on the paper so that's a good start Let's just let the alcohol get evaporate off the paper strip. Whilst I do that, I will multitask. Okay. Now that actually does. I'm not sure if I'm wrong here, but that reminds me of melon and cucumber. It's got this watery, fruity feel. It definitely feels fruity, fruity, exotic-ish, exotic-ish, because cucumber is not exotic, not from where I'm from, but melon is a little bit exotic. I would say it's somewhere between both cucumber and melon. It's got, and like a honeyed floral, honeyed floral, honeyed fruit. Um... DCGMR, 
bergamot, mandarin, orange blossom, jasmine, nutmeg, and burino. That is a surprise. Oh, it's, it's, it's quite nice. How on earth do I describe that? This is it's a fresh fragrance I would pick on a summer's day. It's got depth to it and it has honeyed feel. It has a really honeyed feel even though honey's not listed. It's got a honeyed floral feel and a fruit. It has a fruity, floral, honey, fresh feel. I can understand bergamot, 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 bergamot and orange blossom. Orange blossom can be honeyed as well and I feel like it is here. Jasmine's not heavy, so jasmine's listed, but I wouldn't call this a jasmine dominant fragrance. And I myself, I don't pick up jasmine at the moment. To me, it's a honeyed, floral, watery, fruity scent. Rich Mitch, have I tried Lonval? Um, Yes, I think Lonval is one of the better recent designer releases. I think it's gorgeous. It's the most beautiful honey violet leaf accord. It's rich, it's ambery, it's sexy. I think Lonval is one of the better releases of recent years, in my humble opinion. Um, yeah, Melo. It's not quite smelling how the notes would suggest it smells, but it's definitely really nice, fresh, fruity, watery, fruity, uh, spring, summer fragrance, totally unisex. I'm quite impressed with that one, actually. I think if you're looking for something for the hotter days, that's a little bit unique. You don't want to buy the typical freshies then Melo could be something worth checking out but sample first absolutely do not blind buy next one lace garden i love them. i like the name lace garden that's nice so see if it will spray or dab ah oh, we're a sprayer love a bit of a spray so lace garden i don't know the notes um hopefully dc jim r is on the ball and let's see let's see what we get from lace garden i like the name it conjures up i think the word lace just appeals to me it feels opulent it feels rich Oh, feels like a tuberose fragrance. It's a very voluptuous, voluptuous tuberose. Blousy, in your face. Um, ultra feminine, sexy. Putting it all out there, all out there on the, uh, laying it out on the car. What, on the, what's it, what do you call it? Oh. Okay, my laptop's died, so I'm going to lose my comments. So, I'll just have to get a bit closer to the camera and then I can see the comments. So, uh, Rich Mitch Gunmetal. Oh, hang on. Uh, here's, oh, here we are. Right, I can see the comments, so we're, we're okay. Um, yeah, so this one, which is called Lace Garden, it feels like a tuberose fragrance, something like Madonna's Truth or Dare, kind of rich, slightly green, very waxy. Feels like you're in a garden and there's like thick grass, there's a texture here, a very waxy texture. If uh, DC Jim R is still in the building. Please let me know what the notes are because I'm completely blind here. But 
I think if you're a fan of Madonna's Truth or Dare or Fracas, that kind of thing, it feels to me very tuberosy. So that one is Lace Garden and it, and it does feel garden-like. There's a wet grass element to it, which is quite interesting. I don't like tuberose often, so it's not my thing, but even so, really, uh, if you're into tuberose, then you might like that. And I might be wrong, it might not, it might not be tuberose, it just feels like tuberose. So here we are now with Cafe Cabanel. This is the one that I asked the brand to send me a sample of because I was most interested in it, Cafe Cabanel. And it's a, I believe it's a coffee fragrance. I can't remember the notes, but it had every single note I loved in it. So that's why I wanted to try it. Actually, I have sprayed it already because I was too curious. So I have sprayed it already. It isn't quite what I expected and I can't remember the notes. So um, it's, to me, it's a very tonka heavy fragrance from the start. I think if you like things like Fev Delicious and Tonka Imperial, I would put it in that ballpark. There's kind of a almost almond like Tonka. It's an ambery, sweet, rich Tonka fragrance from, from the notes, from the top notes. It's very delicious. And I have no clue what the actual notes are anymore, but I know that I loved all the notes. Here we go. Ah, DC Gym R, Tangerine, Coffee, Cinnamon, Rose, Heliotrope. Oh, I'm losing you, I'm losing you. Um, rose, Heliotrope, Buttery, and Milky, Accords, Vanilla, Tonka, Caramel, and Sandalwood. So that is this one here, Cafe Cabanel. Yes, it's milky. Yes, it's smooth. It's so delicious. Is it unique? I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say it's that unique. I feel like I've smelt similar accords, similar notes before, kind of pieced together. But it is very nice it's very nice so i'm gonna go for a spray on my hand because i think skin this one deserves skin so we'll just do the one little spray let's pop that on my skin because yeah if you're a tonka fan it, you should put it on your list and you should check it out tonka milky if you like Papillon, Papillon's Bengal Rouge, actually, I think you might like this. It has some similar things going on. I'm gonna give this one a full wearing. It is definitely my favorite. Sometimes things can be too Tonka heavy and they can tick me over the edge and I feel like, I don't know why I have a level with Tonka. I, I like Tonka a lot, but I have a level. And if you tip over the edge of that level, then I can I just can lose it. And I, I feel like, no, this is too much Tonka. There is a level with Tonka. This is nearing, nearing the, that level, but I don't think it's too much. If you're a gourmand lover, it's like a creamy Portuguese dessert with, you know, that creme, what's it called? You know that um, milky condensed milk cream, condensada, uh, creamy dessert milk that you can get. It's a little bit like that. I have to say, this is absolutely beautiful. As long as the fragrance has some development on my skin, this could be a but like this could be a full bottle fragrance for me. As long as it changes, 
if it smells like this the whole way through, my nose will, will get bored because I always seek things to change on my skin. But as, as it is, it is beautiful. So yeah, I love that one. So that is Cafe Cabonel, in case you're wondering. If you share my taste in fragrance, you should probably check that out, Cafe Cabonel. And I think we've got two more left. So we may as well do those whilst we're here. And then I will tell you all to bugger off because I probably should get a snack. So next one, Hegoa, Hegoa, Hegoa. I'm not sure how you say that, Hegoa. Sorry, I can't see your comments, but it's um, awkward now. Um, just reading. Uh, Gun Metals tried Cafe Carbonell. So you like it, do you? Is it full bottle worthy or are you on the fence? Are you still deciding? How do you feel about it, Gun Metal? Let's just check. Trying to find your comments, sorry. Uh, Gun Metal saying, I believe it was composed by Cecile Zarokian. I, I don't know, but if that's the case, I have found that Cecile Zarokian has created many fragrances, particularly the ambery ones. The resinous and the vanillic fragrances have completely grabbed my attention. So I think that Cecile Zarokian is a perfumer that I really enjoy. So this one then is Hegoa. Hegoa. No idea what that means. Let's pop it back in this bottle. Box, box, box. Pop it, put it back in there. And let's see what we think. Okay. Green, green and citrusy at the same time. Sweet. Um, it feels really familiar. I should know these notes really. Um, feels like you have citrus, uh, citrus cologne style elements like lemon and bergamot and orange. It's quite, it's got a sweetness, like there's, um, I'm not sure how to put it, but like a thick sweetness to it, like a honey slash beeswax or, or even just a honeyed floral element. It's really nice. Maybe some pettigrain, something greenish. It feels like a spring day. It feels like a meadow, a spring meadow, but like the best spring day, like a hot spring day, the warmest spring day. The one that tells you that summer's literally two days away. It's really natural smelling. Uh, so DC Gym Art is a fresh yet relaxing fragrance which exudes elegance. I totally get that. It feels like um, I feels like I'm running through a, a meadow full of like wild, beautiful flowers. It feels very natural, but quite a potent fragrance. It's not very. It's not mega light. There's a hint of something peppery going on in here. Feels very natural, very outdoorsy. Slightly, slightly rich. Slightly sweet. I'm actually really enjoying that. This could be a Jo Malone fragrance, but if Jo Malone decided to up their game a little bit and go a little bit stronger and with more presence, there's definitely this honey feel to it. This is sweet, syrupy, or it's like orange blossom that's been condensed and then stirred up with some treacle. 
but then rolled around in an outdoor meadow with some orange blossoms sprinkling its orange blossoms all over it. It's really nice. I would say that's probably my second favourite and then the um, Cafe Carbonell is my top favourite because it is a gourmand. Cafe Carbonell feels like it's got um, Immortelle in it now so it's got that dry herbal yet syrupy sweet thing going on. Definitely requires some skin time, needs some time to explore it. It's very, very rich. And then this is like a breath of fresh air. It's, it's like picturing all your laundry drying in a, on a massive laundry, uh, what do you call them? Line, laundry line, in a meadow, in the sun, on the best day of spring. And there's beehives, there's bees buzzing around, there's beehives and there's flowers everywhere. And it's, it's just really nice. It's kind of, it's quite orangey. I would say there's quite a lot of orangey ingredients like orange blossom, orange, um, maybe orange flower, pettigrain, that kind of thing. But it's a bit richer than just a cologne style fragrance. So, yeah, I like it a lot actually. So I'm gonna have to call it there. I'll call it there, I'm gonna have to end it there because my battery is about to die on the phone. And I'm gonna maybe get Sweetie to stay. Sweetie, do you wanna come up here? Sweetie's just down here. Come on in. Come on. So Sweetie's just here. So let's get her, come on. Let's get her to say goodbye to you all. Thank you so much for joining me. Here she comes. Come on. Oh, you're gonna fall, you're gonna fall, you silly man. So thank you so much for joining me, everyone. It has been an absolute pleasure. And I've really enjoyed chatting and sitting here wearing my pajamas. And here she is. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, she's so nice. Um, I've really enjoyed chatting with you all. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, DC Jim Art, thank you so much for looking up those notes for me. You've done me a massive favour there. I really appreciate that. And um, yeah. I will see you all in the next video. Look out for um, what's going on with Robes08 because he is supporting females in the community and I think that we all need to do that because we just need a little bit of extra help in this community. Not to say that everyone is not supporting women but there's a few that aren't. So let's all just kind of lift each other up and support each other and the better we get at positivity and helping each other out the better the community will be let's um let's bring fragcom up into the realms of greatness i think we're almost there anyway and oh sweetie i don't know she's really feeling this look she would pose for a thumbnail <laughs> she's not as miserable as she looks honestly here she goes she's off she's off bye sweetie Thank you everybody so much for joining in. I've had a blast. I hope you've enjoyed it too. Merry Christmas and I really wish you all the best new year ever. And that is it from me. Thank you. Cheers. I've got sweetie hairs all stuck on my face.